following opinions are solely those of Botest.com and its test captain. Hi, Captain Steve for Botest.com, and today we're going to be taking a look at a premium weekender that adds upscale features to our time spent on the water. It's the Formula 350 SS, and this one is powered by the twin Ilmore 483 horsepower engines. Additionally, these engines are the one drive system from Ilmore that matches the engines to hydraulically shifted out drives. Plus, they even added the one touch joystick docking. So there should be a lot to like about performance on this boat, so let's start by looking at the numbers. The Formula 350 SS has a length overall of 37 feet 11 inches, a beam of 10 feet 9 inches, and a draft of 39 inches. With an empty weight of 13,470 pounds, full fuel and three people on board, we had an estimated test weight of 15,279 pounds. With the twin 483 horsepower 7.4 liter Ilmore engines powering our test boat, we reached a top speed of 57.7 miles per hour at 5200 RPM. That said, we had some significant options on this boat that detracted from our speed. The hard top, generator, not to mention the full fuel, Obviously, the boat will go a bit faster without the weight and windage of those options. Best cruise came in at 4,000 RPM and 41.2 miles per hour. At that speed, the 36 gallon per hour fuel burn translated into 1.1 gallons per hour and a range of 167 statute miles, while still holding back a 10% reserve of the boat's 162 gallon total fuel capacity. As for her handling, those twin 480s got us up on plane in 4.7 seconds, accelerated us to 20 miles per hour in 7.6 seconds, and passed through 30 miles per hour in 11.7. She had the solid feel of a formula, and maneuvering-wise, everything happens at a sedate pace that guests will find particularly comfortable, and this was no matter how heavy-handed we got. She digs her shoulders in during performance turns, and that causes her to bleed off speed, so feel free to accelerate into the turns. We had no chop in sight during our test day, so we can't comment on how she handles in rough conditions. But it was at the dock where she really shines, and that bodes well for those moving up to a larger boat where the confidence doesn't quite make the trip. The Ilmore One Touch joystick docking system was a pleasure to work with, and here we had some significant crosswinds trying to do its best to push us out of position, and failing thanks to the muscle this dual power system offers. But more to the point, the hydraulic shifting of the Ilmore One Drive system is so silky smooth that we could hardly tell when the drives shifted into gear. A glance at the Ilmore display screen is all it took to verify that we were moving the sticks properly. The stick is progressive, so small movements mean small reactions from the boat, and it isn't always obvious, especially with the noiseless shifting. Lastly, there's no real sight line to the extended swim platform, and it sticks out further than you think, but the stainless steel rail surrounding it solved any errant brushes with the dock. So now that we're back at the dock, let's look over some of her features, starting with operations. The engines are accessed from an electric lift hatch, and the cockpit is still accessible with the hatch opened. Inside, there's a pair of Ilmore 483 horsepower 7.4 liter engines connected to the one drive out drive and controlled with the one touch joystick system. This is a new engine for Ilmore and a new match for formula that gives the 350SS her sporty feel without going into the high performance realm where engines are more volatile and don't have warranties. It also fills a void in the market that runs 380, 430 and then jumps to 520 horsepower. This 483 handles all those concerns. Now, the 7.4 has been in Ilmore's portfolio as an inboard engine since 2011 where it was designed for heavy lows and tow sports, then it was transformed for speed as a 570 horsepower. This version is a marriage of both, so benefits all around with this package, all in a catalyzed engine that burns clean. Just ahead, we have access for the optional generator for easy servicing of this unit. The helm is gorgeous and quite well laid out. Two critical pieces of information, the fuel and trim, are right at the top and to either side of a basic compass. Next in the list of importance is to the left side of the panel and large enough to see at a glance, the speedometer and twin tacks. The center is the nav screen, and adjacent to that is the selectable and customizable Ilmore display showing the engine information. Also selectable are the two small Ilmore windows in the tax that we can cycle through with these buttons on the dash. To the left of the panel are the rocker switches that are lighted when activated. The color matched wheel is mounted to a fixed base. The clarion stereo is below and left. The horn stands right out. VHF is below and kind of right in the knee strike zone. The carbon fiber of the upper panel is repeated to the right side of the helm station where we have the coveted joystick with its high and low power buttons, the trim tab controls, 
And notice how the Ilmore digital engine controls are right within reach of the trim tabs, featuring a host of accessories, including the collective outdrive trims, the individual trims, the station select button, engine sync is what Ilmore calls single lever, trailer mode, and neutral select. The helm seats are two-person with individual flip-up bolsters, curved sides, and here we're starting to see the elevated level of the FX treatments that we'll be seeing throughout the boat. Contrast bead welding, carbon fiber in the upholstery. The bow is accessed from center-mounted molded steps with a stainless grab rail adding to the safety of the transition. This is really just for accessing the ground tackle and bow cleats fully forward as the bow rails won't facilitate riding in this area while underway. Under a concealed hatch is the windlass with the road leading to a through the stem anchor roller. A chain stopper is just after the roller and control switches are ahead and to starboard. Back on deck, the stainless framed windshield closes off at the walkthrough and the dual latches are interconnected. To the left of the helm is a double wide seat that can allow two people to either join the captain or one person can recline either forward or aft facing. And we're starting to see how every spot has a drink holder and USB connectivity nearby. The cockpit features versatile U-shaped seating to starboard. The premium upholstery continues. Upscale snap-in carpeting is below. There's plenty of storage, including dedicated storage for the cockpit table. There's the convenient USB connectivity again. To the port side, we're seeing more of the carbon fiber treatments of the FX series at the refreshment center. It features a trash receptacle and sink under separate hatches held open with gas assist struts. Below is a cockpit refrigerated drawer and freezer. To the left are the battery switches, fire extinguisher, and room for storage. Above all is the massive hardtop adding significantly to the comfort level of the cockpit. It's supported by beefy stainless steel framework. To extend the comfort further back to the aft lounge, there's an extendable awning that is electrically actuated. Courtesy lights are everywhere, including the steps to the bow, overhead in the premium hardtop, under the seat upholstery, down at deck level, and even in the drink holders. We access the cabin through a center-mounted sliding door and a screen is integrated into the door assembly. Curved stainless steel rails ease the transition below. Straight ahead, there's a settee wrapping around a solid wood table on a stainless pedestal. There are padded bolsters curving all the way around. Speakers with backlit grills are to the forward bulkhead. Just behind into port is a galley. It includes a microwave, storage, a single burner grill recessed into the Corian counter, a trash receptacle, and a single basin stainless steel sink with contemporary fixture. A bottle and condiment storage area is just behind. Below is a grab rail with more storage. The drawers are on stainless sliders and notice the dovetail joinery. They're also soft clothes. Just across is a TV with a stereo and climate control just below. Open counter space includes stainless beverage holders and a refrigerator is just below that. Behind the TV is the main breaker panel, 12 volt at the top, 120 at the bottom, and in the center is the generator transfer control panel. Behind is the head. It's a wet head with a pull-out sprayer with a hanger just above, all separate from the sink and faucet. Storage is below the sink and above. The forward bulkhead is mirrored. And just outside the head is a mirrored door to a cedar closet. Aft, there's a berth tucked under the cockpit that facilitates overnighting on the 350SS. It measures 6 feet 2 inches long, 4 feet 7 inches wide, there's 23 inches of headroom. It includes lighting, storage, and a mirrored headboard. Non-skid Plazdek takes us out to the stern. A hot and cold shower with engine flush connections alongside and stereo remote are at the port bulkhead. The main focal point of this area is the 4 foot by 5 foot double wide aft facing lounge seat. It's created by flipping the aft seat back forward and since this lounge is safe to use only when not underway, this arrangement makes sense. Drink holders are to both sides, and as expected, there's plenty of storage underneath. The mad skid decking continues out to the swim platform. Our test boat had the extended platform that really adds to the versatility. Drink holders are to both sides. Pull-up cleats are mounted well out of the way, and additional cleats are even higher. And ahead and to the center is a tow point. To the starboard side are the shore power, TV, and city water connections. Well, in my opinion, the 350SS represents a comfortable boat that crosses over from a roomy day boat to a casual overnighter. All with not only the fit and finish we've come to expect from Formula, but the elevated level of trim that the FX line represents. On top of that, we found the handling characteristics of the Ilmore engines and OneDrive OutDrive systems makes for a match befitting this premium level boat. And that's my sea trial and features inspection of the 350SS from Formula Boats. For BoatTest.com, I'm Captain Steve. We'll see you on the water.